don't think we've got any um, stock footage or anything from this. It would be, have to be purely audio at the moment because obviously it's closed alpha, so we're in a really, really early stage of the game. Um, so, um, yeah, like I said previously, we're taking on a lot of feedback right now and really just sit, like trying to analyse the situation, the status quo. Every day the build's changing quite heavily as we take on a lot of feedback. Um, the game is going to be sort of approached as a service rather than a sort of pre-packaged game. Mm-hmm. Uh, so obviously it's free to play. Um, but as we take on on, uh, on uh, feedback, we're going to kind of shape the game depending on what the community wants. So we're going to be listening to the community week by week and sort of taking in the feedback and patching the game appropriately to make sure it's, it's suiting kind of what everyone wants, what everyone wants to see, what everyone wants to feel. Um, so it's going to be an endless kind of project, if you like. Um, so do you mind if you introduce yourself and say what your role is? You're a developer for the Total War so Arena? So yes, yeah, sorry, uh, my name's Elliot Locke. I'm a designer on Total War Arena. Uh, mainly I focus on uh, the battle mechanics and uh, battle development. Uh, also I've got a, a hand in the front end, uh, the meta game and how you progress. Um, but at the moment we're really, our main focus is, is the battles and we want to make those as strong as possible because um, that's where the core gameplay is. So. Okay, so if this is the first foray for Total War into this type of genre, yep. what sort of previous games are you using as sort of benchmarks or targets? We look at, to be honest, we're looking at all of them uh, and just sort of seeing what's done well, what's done right and what suits our game. Mm-hmm. One of the important things is, is we don't want to move away from what Total War is. It's a Total War game. It's yeah. important that it sticks to Total War pillars, um, and it doesn't it doesn't break into the sort of uh, the concepts that aren't acceptable for Total War. Basically, we really you know you, we mentioned we talked about earlier about you know how important flanking is, how important positioning is, how important your kind of the your makeup of your army is, and that it's rock paper scissors etc. All of that needs to hold strong, uh, and if it's not holding strong, then we change the game, we shape it, we, we correct it. Like mm-hmm. I say, it's an ongoing service, and we will keep making sure that it's working. Um, and, and yeah, we're going to approach it like that, really. Okay, and then right when we hop into the game, I assume you all start, once you get this, it's free to play with a base level? Yep, so you all start on tier one, yep. uh, and there's at the moment there's ten tiers, um, so you... You all of your uh, you start with a commander which is generated at random. So we'll give you a random commander at the start. Okay. Uh, in this example, you've got Germanicus. You can change your commanders. Um, there'll be a selection that are freely available, but also a selection that you'll have to unlock with uh, in-game currency, uh, which is silver. Um, so as you uh, progress, your commander will unlock new orders. And these orders are very specific game mechanics that are suited to that commander. So for example, if you've got a support commander like Caesar, he'll have uh, focus fire so you, and uh, inspire, inspire, which is kind of morale. He's, he's all about support, right? Being behind the lines and kind of encouraging and supporting and, and uh, doing kind of damage from afar. And then you've got other commanders like Germanicus who have sort of heavy infantry charge and raise shields uh, and vengeance these are all kind of get stuck into the mix and do like high amounts of damage they're kind of t- tanky commanders we don't really have a concept of a tank but if, if there was one this would be it so um, and then you've got other commanders that are more defensive um, so they'll have c- bracing orders so they can brace from charges um, mm-hmm. and stuff like that when I say defensive though it doesn't mean uh, it doesn't mean that you, you, you camp or you sit back and do nothing. You're effectively, you're a kind of like an aggressive defence. If you're on the front lines kind of defending the charges and the bra- and bracing against what is effectively their attack. Um, so it doesn't necessarily, defensive doesn't necessarily mean idle. Just to stress that, it, it, it means that you, you defend whatever is being thrown at you effectively. So. And I guess the main difference for this game is it's, well, free to play, there's 10 players, and then it's limited units. So it's three, and then when you speak of the commanders, are they actually visibly present on the battlefield, or are these abilities sort of issued from the command camera? Yep. So it's, yeah, it, like you say, it's three units. The commanders, uh, you take them into the battle, the commander is always in the very first unit. So they can be killed, and then yeah. you lose your abilities, or they're still That is conte- it's contextual. So some of the abilities that are yeah. very kind of um, specific to the commander and you need the commander for, yeah. uh, if you lose your commander, you will also lose those, those orders. However, some are more trainings to the units and they'll keep those orders even if your commander is lost. So it's very contextual. It depends on what the order is. Um, so if it's something like inspiration, Inspire, where he's, you know, he's inspiring his troops, if, you, if he dies, you, you will lose that order. Uh, but if it's more of a training, let's say attacking Testudo, that's a training, so that's kind of in the unit, so you won't necessarily lose all your orders. Um, but again, that's, that's it's, it's to and fro, so it depends how we feel. It, it will be changed constantly. It's, 
to fit, essentially. Okay. And these will function more like the passive and active abilities of Rome 2. So you can upgrade some passive ones, and if the general dies, then that's fine. They're still mostly there. And then the active yeah. ones, they have like area effects you issue, or is it unit specific? So all of the orders currently on the commanders, they're all active. Uh, there are okay. no passive. Um, generally, all of the passive stuff is going to come from the unit equipment, which gotcha. uh, uh, if you uh, select a unit, you'll be able to see that you can upgrade a unit, his helmet, his sword, etc. Um, but yeah, in general, again, could we could change it, we could chop it around, depends how it feels, but at the moment the approach has been that the, the commander, everything he gives is active, it's something that you do. Um, and the units, they will gain uh, passive orders as well through their equipment, so if you give uh, if you give them a certain uh, piece of equipment, they might gain the ability to uh, see further or something in, in uh, forest or something like that, so, so that's there as well as another layer. Okay, and the whole idea of progression here is you start off with a basic package, you unlock experience or whatnot in battle, and yep. then you spend that on either unlocking generals, buffing up general abilities, or buffing up your units. Yep, and progressing through the tree all the way to tier 10. So you can also purchase new base units, or are you just upgrading certain specific set units that come with that faction or that so general? So as you get to the end of a, a unit tree, it unlocks an entirely different unit. Okay. So you you might let's so for say, example here we're, we're with Germanicus the Romans and we have uh, Hastati, so that's probably tier one then. Yep. Uh, so Hastati are tier. So here we go, it starts here on tier 2, so for example, gotcha. if you were to have, I believe, uh, it's, it's Italian skirmishers, then the Italian skirmishers will go into your Hastati, and, and so on and so forth. Um, we're, basic, we're looking at the trees at the moment and how they're laid out, it's a really interesting development. We're looking at basically approaching it uh, initially from a really high level, sort of missile versus melee, then we broke it down a little further and we're now looking at sort of uh, the weights of units and, and the general soft roll of a unit. Um, so if you look at the entire tree, effectively as you go down each line, it, it's a different role. So you, mm -hmm. you, you might have pikes and spears at the top and then you, you go into sort of your missile and your cavalry and then you've got artillery. But this is kind of evolving at the moment and it's not entirely nailed down, so, so we're figuring it out. But it's important that you kind of flow into a unit that's relevant and not flow into a unit that's kind of not linked. So that it is something quite difficult that we're trying to sort out at the moment. But yeah, that's the general idea. Okay, and when you go into this, you are randomly given a faction or commander, can you choose that? And if you do choose it, does that exclude other players from choosing the same combination? So everyone at the start uh, is, I, it, when you're given, you're given a random commander, but that's not uh, in stone. You can freely go to another commander that are freely available. So you so, could have all 10 players being Julius Caesar, potentially, or? Uh, at the moment, um, you might find that in this small area, just because it's 10 versus 10, and we've only got 20 players online. But when we gets released to the real world, when mm -hmm. we have a lot of players online, hopefully, that will will be able the matchmaking will decide it. So the matchmaking will not only tally, tally up player skill and player tier, um, it will also tally up player roles and ensure that you've got a match that has a balanced uh, skill level, a balanced role level, and a balanced tier level. So for example, if you're tier 10 and I'm tier one, obviously we don't want to go in a battle together because sure. you're, you're much higher than me. Um, so the, it's all down to the matchmaking, which we've worked on a lot. Um, and you'll see that become more and more effective as more and more people play the game, because uh, the larger the pot, the easier the job is, if you like, because obviously you've got more players to source from. Um, so yeah, it's all down to the matchmaking effectively. Okay, and all this is about unlocking units, and I see different ways to unlock it, probably through experience and then also coins or money. So if a unit is free then, is the point of that unit being free such that like I spend all my funds playing one battle, and then the next battle, maybe I didn't win and I'm starting at zero funds. These guys are there to be able to play. Yeah, if you, are they, on the initial tier, it's just to ensure that you don't get into a negative uh, situation so that you can't play again. So effectively, we've said that the, the initial tier is completely free. You don't have to play for replenishment like you would in tier two, three, etc. So when you go into a battle, if your units get injured, you have to pay for replenishment. Uh, the idea is is that you should always be able to play a battle. Obviously, that's an important uh, balance, and mm -hmm. we're trying to figure out the entire balance at the moment. Um, and and it, as you go into a battle, we want to ensure that you don't come out of a battle necessarily, unless fully deserved, of course, with negative economy. So you're always kind of gaining something. Um, 
And the initial way that we've approached that on the first tier is to make sure it's free. Okay, sure. And the second icon here, that's the green eagle looking yep. one, that is, is that experience versus money? So the two the two experiences we've got, um, okay. green eagle is a unit experience. Uh, again, we're working on uh, the sort of the link, if you like, we're still working on what essentially icon sums that up, unit experience and free experience. But yeah, you've got unit, uh, you sorry, you've got free experience, which you can spend either on units or you can spend on commanders and unlocking orders, or you've got, uh, uh, you've got unit experience here, which you can only spend on the unit and that unit only. Uh, so you wouldn't be able to spend it on uh, another unit and his equipment. It's entirely self-contained. Um, it's self-contained, so if I lose these guys, I have to repurchase their equipment? Is that what you're saying? No, sorry. What oh, okay. I mean by that is that this 220, this number of XP that you have here within this unit can only be spent on this unit's on this equipment. Unit. Gotcha. Uh, and if you haven't got enough, you can source from your free XP. But that's kind okay, of so that's kind of up to you because of course if you do that then that takes away from you progressing your commander because that's what that's the only source of XP you can spend to progress your commander and his orders. And for an individual unit like this, has started unit. Let's say I play ten battles with him, I get a lot of money invested with mm -hmm. him. So he's going to be the, that same unit, and I can just keep giving him better and better equipment. Uh, the, so yeah, at the moment we've got kind of a limit of, of tier three, like three tiers of, of equipment that you can unlock. Um, once you get to the bottom of that and you've unlocked all of the equipment within that unit, you're you're on the next unit. So then you start reinvesting in another unit. So you can no longer bring this guy, and you're you can you're free to okay. bring him. You can if you like, you can you can bring um, you can bring whatever units you want, and that will kind of equate to a, a number which we'll we'll put into the matchmaking. We're, we're still talking about whether you, you know, what happens if you take a tier ten, two tier tens, and a tier one. We probably won't end up allowing it. Um, but if we did allow it, it's kind of it's down to you. Obviously, you would realise that if I'm taking a tier one unit and I'm going to be putting a tier ten battle, that tier one's not going to be so good. Um, so we don't want to restrict you too much. But we'll um, just click on the icon again. This, the computers want to go idle. They <laughs> decide to go back to desktop. Um, and so yeah. And then this guy. So for example, if I, like I said, played a couple games, we rank him up all the way. Yep. And then I quit out and come back another time. I can still find this exact same guy with the same investment. Exactly. Yeah, it'd be exactly the same. Yeah. It'll be, and he'll... how do I keep track of those guys? Do I rename this Hastati something like Hastati number five, or give him a name? Or... Oh, I see what you say. So. Um... If we go, uh, let's just to be able to differentiate, because all these guys are going to be tuned. Right. So I know I see what you're saying now. And um, so if you were to, I'm going to upgrade this. If you were to upgrade a unit's helmet, for example, yeah. all of those units within your army oh, will have type. the same. Oh, yeah. Okay, gotcha. That's sorry. So yeah. So if you had two Hastati units and you gave them this helmet, helmet B, they both oh, units will have that helmet. Yeah. Um, yeah. However, if you okay. had an entirely different unit, so you had two Hastati and a Principe, um, the Principe's equipment tree would be completely separate to the Hastati. Gotcha. Okay, that makes more sense. And, and then, again, it's worth taking on board that the equipment and its progression doesn't necessarily mean better because it might be it's contextual. So it might be better in uh, like armor, for example. You get an armor boost, but you might get a disadvantage in sight, for example. So your vision might not be quite as good, not quite as big. Are you still recording? Yep. Yep. Good. <laughs> so yeah, it, it, every uh, positive can also have a negative in the equipment. Not all the time, but again, it's all it's all contextual. It's entirely total war, right? It's all very very contextual. So that's the idea behind that. Behind that. Okay. Um, yeah, it covers a lot of the UI. And the barracks is where you Let's see if I can recall what's in here. So the barracks is a quick sum up of your unit, so you can scroll through from tier one to tier ten. Um, just by clicking here, and you can see all of your units and what units you want to oh, take okay. out of here and put into your your squad. So obviously you're only on tier two at the moment. So you can look at tier one and tier two, remove a unit, and take another take a unit from your barracks and put it into your army. So this is essentially your kind of resource of units, if you like your barracks. This is where you pull them, pull them out of your barracks and you put them into your army, and then they go into battle. And um, I, I saw earlier there's a cost to replenish. So if you lose half your troops, yep. Next you'll, battle, you'll have to pay to replenish them. Uh, there is also a cost to adding. So as I go, you've got a spare unit here. As I go to add a unit, mm -hmm. let's do a tier two one. Tier one's uh, different. It costs you a small amount of silver to add it. So this uh, creates scenarios essentially where although you might be able to unlock a tier, you might not be able to afford to have an entire army full of that tier. So you might have to go into battle with one tier three and two tier twos, for example. Um, in this context, I think you can actually unlock it all, but um, as the game develops, obviously, it, it depends on how well you play.
Okay, and then on the higher tier, so Romans, I guess, are going to start mostly low tier infantry, then you move, progress towards um, skirmishers, and then cavalry is the highest tier for Romans. Uh, and then you come back to armor legionaries, I guess. So if you click on the or there's armor, the, the mix then. Yeah, so at the oh, moment, okay. we're kind of like focusing on swords, legionaries, and stuff like that, and the and the end the end game, if you like, for the Romans. Yeah, there's a cavalry in the mix, and there's swords. Um, uh, are their main kind of, of weaponry with the Greeks it's more about kind of missiles and um, artillery at the moment mm -hmm. um, again we can look to change it. It, it it's difficult to pin down effectively you're kind of generalizing um, the factions a little bit in a way um, because you, you can obviously argue back and forth as to what the Romans should be what the Greeks should be and what the barbarians would be so the barbarians for example will, will probably be more uh, sort of aggressive and melee and, and in fights and guerrilla warfare if you like like being you know better in sort of forests and stuff like that um, so yeah each faction tree is is different so it's important that when you go into a battle again this the matchmaking will take care of this that you uh, you might bring roman uh, and everything that's good about rome and i might be bring greece and everything that's good about greece and we, when we combine it's all about synergy okay. um, and that's built into the orders as well so with the commander orders on their own they're okay but combined the synergy, like that's what the power is. It, that's where you, you draw your strength as, as an as an entire alliance. That makes sense. Um, so that that's what it's about, and that's how we intend to draw all the sort of team gameplay out of it and stuff like that. So you can play it as an individual, but if you play it as a team, it's in, you're much much stronger. Okay, and then for these factions right now, there are just I think we're sticking to the Roman world, but you guys are anticipating bringing different time periods together. I understand. That is the idea. We're not entirely sure uh, who at the moment. Uh, we only know Roman and. Greek. Uh, we've been looking recently at barbarians, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it will be them. But yeah, everything's kind of open, uh, and the idea is is that we could bring any fact anything in. You know, yeah, we could look to bring in Shogun era and stuff like that at a much later date. Um, so that's kind of the concept of the game is clashing all of those guys together. Um, so yeah, we're looking to bring in different areas. Areas, Perfect. sorry. Okay. Yeah, we'll probably do another recording if and when we do the uh, the game. Yeah, hopefully one we can get into a battle for you and, and show you just how it sort of plays. That'd yeah. be really really cool. Was there anything else you wanted to discuss about the UI here, or the front end? Uh, not really. I think we've pretty much been through everything. Uh, one thing I would say is that your units can also have consumables, which is something that you, addition that you can pay for. So, for oh. example, your sword got your um, what have you got here? You got Hestati. So, sword so they can increase the uh, the got like a weapon smith consumable, which is sharpening your blades. So they've got increased damage. Uh, you've got other things like. Um, Double rations and stuff like that increases your health. We're kind of kind of looking at the conceptual links at the moment to ensure they're strong, uh, and we're not pushing the boundaries too much. And let's grab a missile unit really quickly. Uh, so with a missile unit, for example, he'll have. Um, so if I can add in quickly, he'll have something where. Uh, Flam uh, flaming arrows and stuff like that, and, and they're going to be a consumable, so you'll spend them, so you only get a certain amount of them. Gotcha. So, um, generally at the moment, ammo is infinite, your default, but consumable ammo is uh, ha has a, a certain amount to it, so you, you, you spend it, you consume it. It's a like heavy shot, flame shot, yeah, stuff, stuff like, like that, that. yeah. Uh, that's the idea behind consumables, basically. Okay, cool, thanks.